in continuing our discussion about sleep systems, um, obviously the biggest choice is going to be your sleeping bag. And there's two major schools of thought. There's down and there's synthetic. Quick, I mean everybody's done a million Google searches and you know what these are. Down is warmer, it is lighter, it is more compressible, it lasts longer. Of course everybody always talks about down, once it gets wet it loses its insulation value. Synthetic, a little bulkier, not quite as warm, certainly not for the weight, um, and the light's not great on them. Now with that said, if you treat them well, they're still going to last you several seasons of hiking. Uh, these are a lot more affordable, and that's something if you're real budget minded. In addition to that, you know, these are 80% insulated when wet. They're actually quite good, you know, even when they get right soaked through. One thing we can do about that to combat that in a down bag would be to uh, get a Pertex Quantum or something with a shell that is waterproof. Even so, when your body expels its moisture through the night, it is going to get soaked out. And I swore off down bags for a long time after a um, shelter incident in BC where this bag, my Lafuma, got soaked through. And in doing so, it did lose its insulated value. And um, it was a pretty scary night. There was no sleeping going on. This is a more affordable of the different types of down bags. You know, and I don't recommend if you get down, I recommend you get the best for several reasons. Um, but primarily, it's still just as heavy as a synthetic with the uh, waterproof shell on it. And the waterproof shell didn't do much because it's virtually like a flannel inside. You know, and that, in fact, I believe this blend has cotton in it. I don't know why somebody would do that on a down bag. So with that said, I swore off down for a long time and I said, okay, I'm sticking with synthetic. As far as synthetics, you know, the Mountain Hardware Ultra Lamina and several of those are great bags. Uh, for the price, I don't think you can beat the North Face Cat's Meow. Or you can get into the North Face Snowshoe if you're going to be a little bit colder. Now this bag is rated to 20 degrees and I slept in it and nothing else um, well at 22 degrees and I was plenty warm, in fact unzipping it at some points. Uh, there's very few differences between the men's and the women's for the North Face. The largest difference being um, just a little bit of extra insulation in the belly and the feet and uh, some strategically placed uh, fleece spots so it doesn't feel as cold on your skin. The last foot of this is all fleece in there. It actually has a great feel and that's always been my biggest complaint about this is it feels horrible when you're laying in it. Um, it's very plasticky, you know, just obviously synthetic right on through. Part of that is add, to add to the water repellency. But it's not so much of an issue because I never camp anywhere without a sleeping bag liner. Now when choosing a sleeping bag liner you can choose amongst a million things. Cheap cotton ones, very expensive silk ones, or high-tech high synthetics, which of course is what I chose. This is made of thermalite. This is uh, made by Sea to Summit as a thermalite reactor. It's actually basically the same material as mylar, but it's spun and it's put out in a hollow core foam. So even when it's completely soaked, the hollow core fibers still keep warm. Um, this is an incredible tool, and on many nights I will sleep in just it on top of my bag. I'm just blown away how warm it is. It is virtually see-through when you get it down to one layer, and you wouldn't expect it to have um, the kind of insulation that it does, but these just have blown me away. They've outperformed anything else I've seen, including the uh, expensive silk ones, which are supposedly the warmest natural fiber on Earth. So it doesn't matter what you have, having one of these are a must, and in doing that, I've become less concerned with the uh, feel of the inside of the bags. As far as synthetics, these for 140 bucks are some of the best you're going to find. Um, they've lasted us for, I don't know, several years, three, four years, and been just great bags. Leave them uncompressed when you're storing them, treat them right as you would with any bag, and uh, they'll reward you for it. Uh, these are EN norm tested, and they are absolutely as warm as their rating. You know, don't trust Lumberjack or some other. Coleman type brand, box line stores, they just put a rating on there because it sounds good and they actually haven't done any tested, only buy bags that are EN tested. And that way you at least have something to compare it with. You know that a 20 degree bag is going to be similar to another 20 degree bag. But of course in the pursuit to get more and more ultralight as we've gotten more and more into this, I started turning back towards down. And um, this last year on the PCT, I used a down bag. This is uh, the Mountain Hardware Phantom, one of the most popular bags you'll see out there. Um, this is the Phantom 32. It's EN tested down to 32 degrees. And with my liner, I've slept in it in about 20, 25 degrees. 
you know, where my backpack was a brick of ice outside, and I was playing warm in this. You know, it's amazing because it is so incredibly lightweight. When you're talking about this, you're talking about the men's being two pounds six ounces, maybe two pounds eight ounces, and the women's being two pounds fourteen ounces. I'm talking about almost three pounds. That's a huge, you know, huge amount. And looking at this, you know, this is a 20 denier ultralight nylon all the way through both sides. Um, a great bag. You're talking about 18 ounces, um, 21 listed, 18 when you actually measure it, and even less if you cut the zippers off. Um, we can get into that another time about the zippers. But it has fantastic loft, you know, continuous baffles, so you can adjust the down where you need it. Um, it really has everything you need and nothing you don't. And, of course, the biggest plus about it is how lightweight it is. But just look at the loft of this thing. You know, incredibly fluffy, incredibly light. And going back real quick onto when it gets wet. Now, a lot of people have just said, don't bring down, you know, in any sort of survival situation. It's just too dangerous if it gets wet. I've had this bag soaked, and it's always dried, and maybe two hours in the sun. You know, now, if you're in a jungle, if you're in an extremely humid climate, that's uh, going to be something you have to judge for yourself. But at least out in California... And um, when it's cold enough that the water in the air is freezing. These have performed excellently when wet. Um, the Pertex on the outside has a uh, DWR finish on it, and it sheds the water well. But in addition to that, even once it gets completely wet, you lay it out, it dries. When I go to stuff it, I stuff it in a stuff sack, I can actually see the steam puffing out of it. If your bag is very wet, don't stuff it. Don't stuff it hard. You know, leave it as loose as you can to still fit in your bag. And when you stop for lunch, lay it out and dry it. You know, and these have never failed for us, at least in that situation. Now, I sleep in a tent. I don't sleep right on the ground cowboy camp, you know, so I at least have some shelter and something to collect the dew as it rises off and shut away. But in the end, I would really recommend this. You know, it retails at about $270 to $300, depending where you go. It will last you forever, guaranteed for life. Uh, the quality on it everywhere is just evident. You know, it's an 800 fill down, incredibly compressible, incredibly lightweight, and it's what I'd recommend. All right, thanks for watching.